Hello and welcome to Lab Matters, a webcast from Kaspersky Lab. My name is Ryan Narayan and I'm joined by the head of Kaspersky Lab's global research and analysis team, Mr. Kostin Rayu. And Kostin, I brought you here today to talk about the consumer cloud. Uh, everyone's putting everything in the cloud. People are becoming very dependent on Gmail, on Amazon Web Services, on Apple's new iCloud is going to become a bigger issue uh, uh, as we move forward. Uh, but I don't think we are thinking through the security ramifications of uh, this dependence on the cloud. Talk a little bit about some of the things uh, that scares you the most as you as people start, you know, just putting everything in the cloud because of its convenience and the trade-off between convenience and security. What worries you the most? Well, first of all, I like to say that I am a Gmail user myself. I, I joined Gmail in the very early days and the you beginning had to be invited, right? when you yeah. had to be invited. Yes, so a um, good friend of mine who was lucky enough to get five invitations right. uh, wasted one on me. And from the beginning, uh, my impression and the idea behind Gmail was that uh, you don't have to delete emails anymore. You can keep pretty much everything. Right. So that kind of you know counter. Um, counteracts um, uh, towards the idea that uh, all your emails will be in just one place for you to search, no problem, but also for uh, pretty much anybody who has your uh, password to download, to access, to search, uh, to steal, right. you name it, right? So uh, I think that um, the biggest worry, which uh, I have kind of kept for myself or even mentioned uh, to others in the past is that if somebody gets access to your um, cloud account, be it um, Gmail, be it um, um, the Amazon, or be it mm -hmm. um, the Apple iCloud, uh, they pretty much have the uh, chance and the opportunity to download uh, all your files, to download all your right. entire data. Moreover, they have the ability to delete it. And so the risk here is that uh, your data can be uh, lost forever, or it right, can be there's even, no local backup. It can be stolen, yeah. So the people who steal it can use it for all sorts of bad things. They can blackmail you, or they can even sell it to to somebody to the highest bidder. Right. And the fact that we are depending on cloud, and uh, we've all the security we've put into just a password, uh, just basically makes it a little more scary. Uh, talk a little bit uh, about, uh, you know, what needs to be done from the vendor's point of view. I know Google has started adding two-factor authentication to Gmail as a, as a security measure. What other things can be done to, you know, protect uh, people's data in the cloud? Yes. Well, ideally, I think the best solution here, which is uh, which nobody is going to implement, at least the big players, I don't think they will ever implement this, is to uh, encrypt the data in the cloud with the key stored on your computer, so that uh, your computer and you are the only person which can access the data. So they're not going to do this Why ever. Not? Uh, because I think it uh, breaks um, two principles. The first one is that encrypted data cannot be compressed. So here, uh, a lot of data which you put into the cloud uh, needs to be compressed in order to reduce costs, right? Right. right. Uh, in the case of music, uh, the so deduplication, right, right, for right. deduplication. So um, a lot of people listen so to the same issue. music. Yes, the first one, the first issue, I guess, that's um, it's economic. The second one is uh, they will no longer be able to index it. And I think that every uh, cloud provider in the world will be interested uh, to know what kind of files people store. Right. So data the, mining becomes very valuable. Absolutely. And so if, for, for Gmail, we just talked about Gmail. Yeah. The fact that they can mine your data to to, to put contextual ads next to, to it is their business model. target commercials, yeah, pretty that's their much. business model. Adv targeted advertising. Right. So, so they're I, never going to encrypt no, stuff. No, they'll, that they'll never use. allow you to store encrypted data or they'll never make it easy for you to store encrypted data in the cloud. So um, what are the alternatives, obviously? You could use some kind of solution which does this transparently for you, and I think this will be a very interesting market in the next years. We'll see maybe security products which can provide this kind of protection for the some user. Some sort of encryption of, of your the, cloud data yes, without your provider providing that. Correctly, yes. Because there are even now there are a lot of backup services which say that they will encrypt your data in the cloud. But I, I would never trust such a solution right. that uh, they claim that it's encrypted, and it could very well be encrypted, but uh, um, you know, you never have the kind of um, um, safety, the feeling of safety which something like uh, PGP, pretty good privacy, right, right. dedicated encryption tool will provide. 
Do you think we'll start to see two-factor authentication become just a, a, a regular piece of uh, technology that everyone uses? Do you think it becomes ubiquitous? I think um, it will become more popular. But um, here, uh, you know, we have the classical um, timeless uh, problem of um, security versus usability. usability. And people, they don't like it when things are complicated. Right. You add another layer of getting, my, getting yeah. into my data, it becomes a burden. Absolutely. For instance, I, I was talking to um, a, a friend of mine who's working for a bank. And um, a couple of years ago, they um, deployed um, two-factor authentication to all their customers. So uh, the very next day, they received uh, thousands of calls from very angry people who could no longer access their accounts just with a password. Right. Uh, and they explained that uh, you need to use the uh, token for a better security. It provides a, a lot of advantages, so it's a good thing. But uh, still, the people were very upset because they can no longer log in into their accounts with just the click of a mouse. Okay. So the usability versus security argument becomes even more prominent. Yes, so I think this is the thing which will hold back the uh, improved security of two-factor authentication systems. Right, uh, just, just general consumer uh, pushback. Exactly, yeah. Google Chromebooks uh, is another interesting development as it relates to the cloud because their entire model is there's no local computing anymore. I mean, as you do things, it gets up to the cloud automatically and then you retrieve your data from the cloud. Do you think we'll see, do you, first of all, what do you, what do you make of the whole uh, Chromebook model uh, as, it, as it relates to consumers, maybe even small, medium-sized businesses using uh, Chromebooks. Do you think we'll see an explosion of that or do you think it's just oh. another um, expensive Very shortly, I think um, the idea is great, the implementation is wrong. Um, the idea of uh, having a lightweight computer which uh, stores data into the cloud, it gives you a lot of um, mobility mm -hmm. for, you know, for first thing. Um, but what, why do I say the implementation is uh, broken here? The reason is that um, the, in the case of the Chromebooks, the hardware is very low end. Who would like to buy, you know, in 2000, we are in 2011 when iPad 2 is on the market. Right, right. Nobody wants to buy a low end hardware, I mean, uh, Intel Atom processors. And so that doesn't make sense to me. Uh, on right. the other but hand... If, but, but, but if it's affordable, Yes. If, it's, if it becomes yes. a cheap piece of uh, uh, maybe disposable. disposable. Right. Uh, yeah, it's the uh, entrance of the disposable computer. Computer, yeah. I think that's, that's, the, that's, I think that's the model that may work. Well, that, is a mo well, that is a model which Google is trying, uh, is pushing you into adopting. But uh, to be honest, I don't think that many people will actually um, accept uh, this kind of gamble because it's a gamble in my opinion. Sooner or later, the connection will look with the cloud gets broken, so you need to store things right. locally. But we're already in the disposable model of cell phones. I mean, people cycle through cell yes, phones on an annual basis correct, or but, uh, look six at, month uh, basis. Look at the most recent smartphones. People are moving away from the um, slower, the slower phones, low -end ones. dumb yeah. phones to the mm -hmm. high-end, uh, super fast uh, ARM, you know, mm -hmm. ninth, so, yeah. ninth generation of processors which offer a huge computing speed. They're actually so fast that sometimes they're even faster than your um, netbook, right? Um, so I think that um, um, they're trying to push this into the market by using uh, low-end hardware. So this idea is good, but I don't think it'll catch too much. What about Apple's iCloud? Do you think that one actually has more legs from a, from a uh, I potential so. to get uh, popular? Yes. Because we... Apple, has, Apple has, has meddled with the cloud in the past. I mean, mobile, me, and there's some other little things that they've done that really didn't get traction. People weren't willing to pay. Uh, for this. Why do you think iClouds make such a big difference? I think that um, the difference here is uh, the fact that you can actually have the um, iCloud on your high-end laptop or you can have it on your high-end workstation. That's a huge difference here. Uh, we're talking a bit between, uh, let's say, um, uh, to have all your data into the cloud forcefully, Google pushes right. you into doing that, or to have it like a, a backup, like an option, Right. Uh, a subscription-based uh, option. Yes, um, it's I, I would call that um, it's the um, um, how to say the um, choice. It's the um, um, marriage of choice. Marriage of choice. Marriage of choice. 
Thank you very much, hopefully. And thank you for watching another edition of Lab Matters, a webcast from Kaspersky Lab. You can check out some other additional webcasts at youtube.com slash Kaspersky.